everybody. Welcome to another episode, a brand new episode of Between the Sheets podcast here on the United Broadcasting Network. We're on the first and third Friday of every month from 7 p.m. Pacific all the way to 830. I know you think it's long, but listen, it goes by pretty fast. Um, let's see. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, and please like the Facebook page Between the Sheets podcast. Also, all the shows after will be found and are found on the YouTube channel, between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. Hey, everybody. So, President Biden, I like to hear that. Vice President Kamala Harris, I like to hear that too. We'll talk about it, but let me go around the room and check in with everyone. And then we have some wonderful guests, friends of mine for not quite a long time, but I thought about it. It came up on the Facebook feed when we went out to dinner, and it's been a year. But I feel like I've known these guys for a very long time. They are just in my heart. Um, they're like my bros, my gay bros. Um, Yay! <laughs> gay bros! Um, <laughs> you know what? In a time where we have a new America and, a, and hopefully a new economy, um, what they're going to talk about is land investment. And um, we're going to make some, clar some clarification here and discuss how you guys can be sort of moving some money for your future. But we'll talk about that in a bit. I'll go around the room and introduce the, my lovely co-hosts that are here this evening. We have the, the beautiful Cara Noble, pretty in pink. Good evening. As you can see, I turned my Christmas tree into a Valentine's tree. Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> yes, and if we only had a Valentine. Uh, <laughs> Carol Murphy no is back in the house. Gayan, lovely to see your beautiful shining face again, as well as everyone on tonight's call. I'm so excited to be here in 2021. So thank you. Yeah, it's like, what year is it? It is 2021. <laughs> yes. God. Um, I actually want to say hello, hello to another mutual friend before I move on. Friends of myself, Dane and John's, the lovely Valerie Milano, who is a who's watching tonight, and she has been a rotating co-host as well, and she is the editor and uh, queen of the Hollywood Times. Um, next up, a goodie, an oldie, but a goodie. Uh, she pops in every once in a while because she's so freaking busy. I yeah. want to call her her real name, which I am. It is, <laughs> I don't care, it says Roxanne. Yes, Roxanne, but we love her as Tristan. Hi, Tristan, Roxanne, whatever the hell your name is, welcome back. Hello, thank you. It's great to be back. Thank you so much. And then all the way from L.A. to Rome, back to L.A., and she hasn't gone back to Rome yet, is, um, again, someone who I've known now going on, holy shit, about 2009, a very long time. She was a member of, as, I, as you guys know, the second incarnation of the Between the Sheets podcast. Um, she is a wonderful vocalist um, on her own, as well as <clears throat> for Blue Pearl. I know she has some projects in the world her sister that she can bring up later but you know most of you do know her or if you don't know her for real you've heard her she is the uh she has toured with pink floyd um the lovely and wonderful Derma durga mcbroom hello hello so happy another fun fact she used to be an actress so if you watch the I show i still am bitch what you saying <laughs> <laughs> I had a film but, tape, but I don't. I know you mostly as a singer, but a, a tidbit: watch Flashdance. She's in it. Uh, <laughs> wow! Well, I will. I want to. I um, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, we have the two guys that I talked about. Um, we have Dane Conrad. He's on my left, but he's the one with the shiner. And then we have John Ellers. His partner, for how long are you guys together? 26 years. Oh, that, that is 12 lifetimes in a gay man, in a gay man's. Uh, <laughs> how many in a lesbian? How many lifetimes in a lesbian? 372, I think. <laughs> a thousand. <laughs> they move in, they stay together. Even if it's shit, they'll stay together till the end. Keep um, proving it. We have a mantra in our house, you know, if they're not dead and they're not leaving, you just keep them. <laughs> <laughs> you also have a child. You guys also have a child, which is not a child. He's a man. Uh, so, yes. I mean, yes. you are really sort of um, the epitome of what 
a couple, doesn't matter, gay, LGBT plus straight, whatever, um, a foundation of what a really wonderful relationship is. So thank you for joining us on the show and just be an exemplary to everyone out there of, yeah, shit works. And <laughs> yeah, why does shit work? Because you have, to, you have to be willing to put in the time. Relationships yeah. are not easy and people change and people grow um, with every year, with every 10 years. But it's a testament that I, I think, my belief is that if you really truly love that person through all the growth spurts and the changes and the speed bumps and the roller coasters, you stay together and you work it out. And if it's meant to be, it is. And if not, don't stay in it. If it's shit, you know, everybody's got life to live. So that's, uh, right. that's right. And thanks too. You know, every year I'm going to tell you just one of our little secrets is every year we sit down, we write our goals and then we switch papers and we write on the other person's goals, how we can help them manifest their goals. That is gorgeous. That I love is so it. cute. Yes. I love it. Adorable. it works. It works because <laughs> yeah, like you for you. Um, so maybe that you can impart that to others, but I, I've never heard that. I've heard about the list that before, if you're single, you put the list of the, the deal breakers, like what's a deal breaker. That's an absolute not and what you want to manifest. Um, and you know, I've done it and then I ended up with someone and that, and that, and that was, I think the universe was fucking with me there, but, <laughs> but, but I will tell you something. Um, from that experience, <laughs> I have grown tremendously because of that. And I do believe it had to happen. Um, I have no ill will. I still love the person as a person. Um, and if I ever see the person again, I have two words. Thank Fuck you. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's her flaw, so fuck you. But I've grown. <laughs> And that's important to me. So the two words would be thank you. Exactly. <laughs> you know, look, every every January, if you write down your, your crazy shit and your partner knows that you're doing more crazy shit, then at least they know that's part of your goals. And so that's the whole method to that madness. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm actually at a point now where I, I'm working with my ex. My ex, uh, for many years, is the lead singer of Fishbone, Angelo Moore, who's one of the most talented men in show business, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. And songs that I had started writing back when we were together in the early 2000s, we're finally recording now. And it's great that we have such a nice friendship um, and I can look at him and see him for all the things that I love him for. And I don't get put in the washing machine of angst with all the stuff that I broke up with him over because we're not a couple. In fact, his current wife and I are good friends too. Awesome. So it's, it's nice to have that. Yeah, we're firm believers. Like, you know, if you've been in a relationship with somebody regardless for how long, and we've tried that with, both of our exes and his exes that's a long story mm -hmm. <laughs> he ain't so happy that's mm -hmm. that way is it juicy yeah yeah <laughs> yes. so we're believer if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody and you know them that well who else would you rather have in your corner than someone that yeah. knows you intimately that will call you out on your shit and right. that's you try to I, maintain I, those relationships best i'm not i'm well my my, my not my last ex but the, <laughs> longest, the longest relation i had was 15 years and she and i are we're best friends. She is family now to me. I mean, and it's sort of like, just because, you, and I'm friends with, I said, nah, probably 85 to 90% of my exes. But I mean, you know, there still is, if you get into a relationship and you put in some time in it, there is a love there. There's, there will always be some sort of love there, at least in my, in my experience. So just because the relationship or that sort of dynamics don't work doesn't mean that I don't want that person in my life and I love them any less. Unless they're a fucktard, if they fucked yeah. around, if they slept, if they beat the shit out of you. You know, those people, I don't care. And luckily I've never had them in my life. Um, but under any other circumstances, I think you can work out difficulties. And I found that, you know, and I think we all have, if we do maintain friendships with our exes, you know, once that whole relationship thing is gone, and you're just like coexist. It's just such so much more comfortable. Oh, Sue Burnside's watching everybody. Oh, hey, yeah. girl. <laughs> Troubles Trouble. in the house. <laughs> Let me see. I think I hold on one second. I gotta see something. Um, okay. So 
I thought we had a caller. But in that, so before we segue on to more, I just want to tell people, yes, you can call in. This is a live call-in show. I know sometimes you guys don't call in because you're like, I don't know what to say, or we're just so fascinating. That <laughs> they'll find you. Problem. <laughs> three, two, three, five, two, four, two, five, nine, nine. Three, two, three, five, two, four, two, five, nine, nine. Don't worry about it. We're going to start talking about topics and then you know how we are. We're the ping pong. If you just want to change the topic, feel free to call. Anything sexual is fine. Um, but let's <laughs> start there. <laughs> not. Um, oh, that Sh- our Cheryl goes completely red on us. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell? Can you yes, tell? Yes, I can. I can. So I don't know what to start with first. I want to talk about you guys, but I really kind of want to talk about that our new America. Our- yes. America. Well, and that rolls into us, so that's yes, perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, how amazing was that inauguration? Oh, and was so, I mean, like chills. Yeah. Um, I, I, I will have to admit, I would sleep with Jill Biden, and I would absolutely <laughs> sleep with Trump. <laughs> no, not a problem. So, you know, those. I mean, to have a first lady, and then a vice president that's not only brilliant, they're just brilliant women. Yes, yes. And they are my age group. So there you go, Roxanne. Um, <laughs> I love all age groups. I don't discriminate. I know you do, baby. <laughs> I do. Well, well, you know, you said uh, Sue Burnside was on and I, I got to tell you, Sue Burnside, Valerie Milano, they are our bestie besties. Oh. We have such an uh, affliction and affiliation with the, L- the lesbian community here. It's crazy. Uh, but Sue is always at the inauguration. And of course, she didn't go this year. And on Facebook, she commented on how she felt this was one of the best inaugurations of her mm-hmm. political career. So it was beautiful. It was amazing. Um, I mean, I, 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 I want to talk. I don't, you know, the thing is, I don't want to talk about that asshole anymore. No, it's no. no. I don't want to talk about. It. I mean, I don't care. Good luck. Shove it up your ass. Don't let the door hit you. And you know, don't let the door hit you too bad. Um, I I hope he's impeached. I can't imagine how he couldn't be. Why he couldn't be. I mean, you know, it's it's you know even like even at the end, and you guys saw, even the Republicans were fucking saying, "I'm out of here." He's yep. right. So well, the, people, armed people, up. rushed in to try to kill them. I mean, sure. it's all fun and games, pushing conspiracy theories until a crazy mob is rushing into your workplace with zip ties, looking to kill you, and putting up an impromptu gallows out in front of the Capitol. People were like, "Uh, the joke's gone a little too far." You know, when you have a, uh, you know, a practical joke. And you know, like you come, you pretend like a a killer with a knife, and you go to like stab the person with a mask on, and they pull out their gun, and they're gonna. It's like okay, the joke has gone too far. Yeah, for sure. Like he needs to be locked up. He, we need to lock him up. Oh yeah. Oh, I've. Ooh. He needs to be persecuted for all those rapes. Uh, you know, um, accusations. He needs to be held account for all that stuff. He 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 needs to be locked up. Yeah, well, no. let, let's be clear. You know, all of this happened because of girl power. You know, you know that vote mm-hmm. made a big difference. That's that's where someone like Sue Burnside, she, she made so much of that happen. And, you know, all of you and people like Val Milano on tonight, you guys got your businesses going. You're out there. You've made an impact. You fought all the, pardon me, the bullshit. And so uh, this happened because of the vote and the black vote. My I was going to say. <laughs> Thank you, Georgia. We will now oh, fly Stacey into Adams. Georgia. Stacey Adams is a rock star. A yeah. rock, absolute rock star. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, uh, anyway, so I just want to say kudos to all of us, because I know we all voted the right way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, what I did notice this week, uh, in the last week or so, um, the, obviously the polarization on Facebook. Um, you know, people, I saw a lot of hate from both sides on Facebook. 
um, the hate of the Democrats to the Republicans, the Republicans to the Democrats. And I'm talking mostly because most of my friends are LGBT plus LMNOP, even amongst each other. And, and it was really disheartening to me because hate is hate. I, I don't care what side of the, the side that you're on, you know, the good side, the bad side, it doesn't matter. Hate is hate. So I just kind of want to put it out there to people. First of all, on Facebook, it's it's very powerful, believe it or not. Even though it's, it's very powerful. And just be careful, you know, and I understand how people are impassioned and stuff like that. But, you know, if you, you no one's saying to squelch your opinion. You can agree to disagree. But I don't like when people literally slam people on Facebook. Okay. Right. Um, that on a minute I, I i have talked to a few people about this and i must say that the the um ability to just like kind of well no don't don't hate i will say can be a function of privilege i am not going to apologize for hating a white supremacist i'm not going to do it and i am not going to apologize for gloating that that piece of shit yes i said it is out of office and is about to get royally reamed, legally speaking. <laughs> the state of New York, the state of Georgia now, grand juries are convening that are going to indict that son of a bitch and they need to. This, this man out of his white privilege and what sense of white supremacy literally sought to overthrow a, a legal election and disenfranchise the voices of millions of voters because he didn't want to admit that he lost. And yeah, I'm angry about that. I think he's an asshole mm -hmm. and I hate his guts. He's a rapist, <laughs> he's a misogynist, he's a racist, he's all of those things. And you're supposed to hate people like that. And I think that's I what we saw. I've been held hostage for four years. I cried the whole day of the inauguration out of sheer relief. And yes, I hate him. I have no problem saying that. I don't hate lightly, but if I hate your ass, you earned it. <laughs> and I think he earned it. I don't think yeah, anybody's imputing because... hate against him. I'm just saying that in general, you know, obviously there are some despicable people in this world. Of course, I hate them. I hate the word hate. Um, I really don't like to use it. I will say I immensely dislike, but him is a hate. I'm just saying, even to each other though, you know, we can agree to disagree. I don't think, you know, if some, if I, if I am not a Republican, don't get me wrong, but if I was a Republican and Durgo, and you're a liberal and we're still, you're not going to hate me. I'm not going to hate you. We still love each other. We just would yeah. agree to disagree. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. What's happening on Facebook is people are just going at each other with total disrespect. That's all for differences of opinions. Fair enough. That's what, Except that's for those people that are supporting the 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 opinion of the, the white supremacists in the White House. I'm not gonna be gentle with those people. And I got in a big fight with my best friend in the world because her husband is a rabid Republican and she's, she's been bored. She started thinking that the election has been um, stolen. And oh, right. you know, we've managed to kind of get over that a little bit because we love each other so much. I had another friend who called me a racist, called me a pedophile supporter, said that she has seen with her own eyes photos of Nancy Pelosi torturing children and she has blocked me. But you know, I had been pushing her away for the last year anyway. So. Oh, by the way, that's another one I'd sleep with, Nancy Pelosi. I like her too. <laughs> <laughs> transition, just a transition. Let's lower that age group. What about you, baby? Hold on, hold on. We have a caller. Come on, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm ready. We're ready. Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, this is Anne and, and, the, and the girls and the guys. Welcome to Between the Sheets. What's your name? Hi, uh, my name is uh, Paulina Angel from the Coachella Valley. Hi, how are you? I'm doing very good. Um, I was uh, suggested by Valerie Milano to, you know, call in and to check out the podcast. <laughs> well, are you liking it so far? Oh, yeah. And I totally agree with everyone is saying. Um, it's like 
I I am those kind of people that I do not like the word hate as much, but you know, it is this, this kind of thing where even when there are people in the LGBT community that do support someone like um, like Donald Trump, which is very very heartening, and you know, it's because you know Donald Trump is totally against our community, and to, for there to be people in our community to support Donald Trump just because they it's because of some type of monetary kind of uh, perk that they're getting from supporting him. It's very, very hardening when you see, like, you know, all the, the sick cool stuff that he has done to other communities that we actually intersect with, whether it's, you know, uh, like Muslims, uh, people of color, you know, seeing all the families being torn apart and put in cages, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard to not hate people in your own community when they're supporting someone who totally hates our community and hates other communities that we uh, totally identify with. Yeah, exactly. absolutely true. Actually, here, here. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I you know, ugh, I am so glad he's gone. I can't, <laughs> it's just this dire relief. And I, was like, I don't want to talk about the fucker anymore. He's gone, you son of a bitch. I hope you pay the price. I hope locusts and scorpions consume you from the inside out. I swear to God. <laughs> I Sorry, I really like horror movies. I love horror movies. Uh, well, thank you, Pauline, for calling. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you'll continue to watch the show. And thank you so much. Thank you for uh, having me on and just know that, you know, the crazy man is gone now. And so now we're on this amazing movement of putting our, our country forward. You know, we have the Democrats in the Senate, the House, the White House, you know, we're now ready to start continuing this whole thing of equality that we have started during the Obama era. And I feel that the Biden-Harris era is going to be even more great, even though we're still um, going through the whole emotions of, you know, COVID and pandemic. Um, I just had COVID. I'm recovering from it. So I'm hopeful about this new administration that we're going to get through COVID and we're going to finally start returning our country to uh, some sense of normalcy. <laughs> so it's probably a better taste? country. Can you smell and taste? Yeah. Can you smell and taste? Mm, I'm still struggling with that right now. You know, it, it comes and goes for me, you know, so I'm still, you know, taking medications that I need for it. But, you know, I'm, I got my strength up, I got my energy up, you know, and getting active. And um, I'm also running for um, a assembly delegate posi position for my district. So I'm, Need to get myself nice and you know better so that I could serve my constituents. You know. Well, wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll, you know, we'll send you love and light, and um, we're glad you're on the the path to recovery. And um, we know you. I I know you're going to win the election, Cheryl. Isn't she going to win? I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a shoe in there, but yeah. yeah. So Cheryl says it, and so it is. <laughs> and so it is. <laughs> Thank you, love. I feel better. Appreciate you calling in. Thank you so much. Have a fabulous night. Thanks. Um, Catherine Gray's on the line. Hey, Catherine. Catherine. Is hey, Catherine. Catherine, <laughs> Catherine. Catherine. Catherine Gray has a show here, also on the United Broadcasting Network. Invest in her. She says, Dane and John, little red heart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so all right i don't want to okay let, let's we'll, we won't talk about covid right now we're i mean i i we will continue to talk about the presidency because I, that's going to have an impact of what sort of what you guys do but i want people to get to know you some of us do know you on a, on a personal level as well as a business level so um a i guess what did you guys how did you guys meet what were you doing before? And then how did you get into land investment? And then we can just go from there. Okay. Um, we met in uh, Denver, Colorado. That's where I'm from here. I had moved there. John's from Chicago. So we met um, through, you know, just a acquaintance. It was by Ed in passing. I actually watched him for six months 
stalker. And um, <laughs> he never even noticed me until um, one day we're actually we're working out in the same gym together and I dropped the weights and my shoulder had given out and he asked me um, if I was okay. We became friends. We started talking with each other. We started doing coffee. He was married before and this, this whole thing Oops. blew up into a big <laughs> thing. To a man in, or a woman? To a woman. Ah, okay. Yeah. And um, so that became quite the scandal before it was even an issue because we were having coffee. So people turned it into more than it actually needed to be. Sounds but, like a dynasty. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, but we Come were- Come on, y'all cruising. Yeah. Okay, let's the, spill the tea. Y'all were gym cruising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, we did, not, but we did not meet in the showers. I know how that happened. No. <laughs> we are decent ladies. <laughs> I was Catholic. <laughs> oh, no. oh boy. Jane, what were you doing? Like, what was your profession? Um, I was a um, hair designer and ambassador with uh, TG Linea, Tony and Guy, and an educator for Schwartz Hop Color. Was doing that for a long time. And um, hair color. I, Hair color. Is hair that color. what happened? All that you were testing too much? I had to, yeah, I had to too pull much mine bleach. Out. So many people would get weird because if you messed with your hair when they're doing theirs, she'd get mad. So I would, ju I just got rid of mine. It made people feel so much more confident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm an entrepreneur. We had a bath and body line. I'm an author. John is a doctor by trade as well for 30 plus years. So, and then we both retired from those careers about uh seven years ago and that's how we got into what we do now because but we found something better find out about like did you both start out as land investing or were you doing other things that suddenly led you to this so so le legitimately you know 26 years ago we we realized that real estate was the core of getting wealthy and you know both of us come from dirt floors so we really didn't have the the silver spoon or the knowledge base that there were other things so we amassed 60 rental units in denver you know meanwhile we're both working 80 hours a week at our regular jobs mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and we did we managed them we killed the cockroaches we painted them we redid kitchens um and and so then about 15 16 years ago one of our girlfriends based here in redondo beach she said you guys are investors you should take a look at this and, and, you know, we were living the bougie lifestyle. We were in an 11,000 square foot mansion in Denver and, you know, Ooh. just rolling, right? And uh, she showed this to us and we resonated with it right away and because you don't have all the brain damage with dirt. And, you know, I thought, <laughs> let me tell you. Tumbleweeds don't complain. <laughs> you know, if you know anything about rentals, if you have 60 of them, I literally knew all the judges in the Denver court system. So uh, I can tell you today, effortless, you know, and, and the rewards are overwhelming if you do it right. And so uh, this company, 40 plus years of doing this, uh, we bought land the first day we heard this. Because this guy here grew up by John Wayne Airport. Wait, you know, he's really old, much older than me. Um, it's all farmland, all farmland back then. But, you know, that's when it was orchards and strawberry fields. And now today, you know, you all know it's about 25 million an acre. It, it can go up that high down there. And he, at eight years old, told his mom and dad to buy land there. So, you know, how about that? Yeah. So I, I just want to set that precedent so you understand our foundation. You know, um, we both came from poverty, went into real estate, had that experience of watching the land here vanish, like nowhere else on the planet, guys. Mm. And of course, with the right science, with the right research, it, that's the, the keynote here, because land can be very dangerous. So we bought our first two. We started selling all those rental properties. We 1031 exchanged them. Mm -hmm. um, then we- What's we accumulated about 6.2 million square feet of dirt up until last year. Wow. And now what's going on caused us to double that. So we wow. now control over 13 million square feet of dirt ourselves. We, we have over 600 investors. 
and we probably are helping them manage it's over 50 60 million in assets and uh, sue burnside valerie milano uh, catherine deborah they all own dirt and it, it's really effortless yeah it's just a diversification and it's a part of the real estate um portfolio or uh, um the real estate system and no one ever thinks about who controls the land before the developers get there it really is right. that simple and we just do the science for our investors to make sure it's land worth owning and it's in the path and you buy it you sit on it you wait we guide you we update you all the way to the finish line and help you as a free service so it's an amazing company and that's what we fell in love with 15 years ago and now we work with them yeah but i think you kind of get it. it's like we're still very excited about it and oh, we've yeah. been doing this a while <laughs> But it is so fun because we, we really, we're all about, we've always been about helping people and making people's lives better and trying to inspire other people and do, do good by people, regardless of whether it benefits us or not. And this is, it was such a good fit for us in so many ways that we could actually help people with their financial future. And we're really big about helping the LGBT community as well, because no one really pays attention to our community or to women or to other, they're all looking for as we've seen over the past four years, the wealthy white guy or, you know, the country club people. What about the rest of us that are just getting by nines and nine to five that have 5,000, 10,000 that they can park somewhere that can turn into exponential amount of money over time if you're patient. And that's what most people don't realize. And that's really the fun about this. And why, how patient why, why, do you have to be? How what? We're talking how patient, five years, 10 years? Well, you know, you, you want to follow the experts on this love and and that's you know go in it with a warren buffett strategy you know and that's a 10 plus year holding strategy so really this is a kitchen table strategy it's something that the wealthy do and they don't want us to know about it so mm -hmm. part of our mission statement is to get this on your kitchen tables and, and we do it at the the 20 000 all the way up to 20 million section right so the big boys aren't playing in this pond yet we're making millionaires with <laughs> these investments um you know sue burnside she's on she's under contract valerie milano has already had some drive-by interests uh, we're negotiating three of ours right now um you know and we ride with you all the way to the finish line so i just want to cap that with how to do this because so many people i kind of think the next question is I'm too old or will I be able to enjoy this right well we're living a lot longer but what you can do is use your IRA and 401k without penalty so instead of putting a stock or a bond in there you can actually put a piece of dirt in there and you're not going to touch that until you're 72 plus right on most cases and why not have something that's going to give killer windfall returns well my thing is screw you all because y'all are not going to get the wine and cheese and alcohol in their living room at their home so. <laughs> <laughs> you did you did <laughs> I, I haven't bought yet a long story but i haven't bought yet um but um but yes they they are wonderful so guys um you know explain if someone wanted to do this yeah right how how do you guys besides the wine and cheese and alcohol at your house how <laughs> does one sort of like take us through what the process is okay so so first of all you know tonight is really more of a social but tomorrow we're doing a class and so it's it's 45 50 minutes and we talk so you don't, you're muted and you can learn all of the intricate details of this and who the company is. It, you know, we'll talk about some of that maybe tonight, but tomorrow four o'clock, and then we do three or four of them a week because we have 16 agents working with us. Um, but, you know, Dane can tell you the process is very simple. Yep, so it's, and as John was saying, it's a, basically it's an obligation of free presentation, sign on, listen, learn what you mm -hmm. want. It's all virtual because as you know, Gan got in before we got shut down. So she got wine, cheese and <laughs> taking the dinner after. <laughs> we can do that We anymore. do have a good time. <laughs> I don't know. But we, yeah, but the presentations are lighthearted and upbeat and you can ask whatever questions at the end. But we tell you everything. We tell you the who, how, where, why, when. And it's, how much? It's, you will start thinking very differently on how you'll see pre-developed land and where it's, where it's going. You're going to start seeing roads differently. 
and signs differently because it's all planned out 10 to 15 years be ahead. It's just knowing how to identify that public knowledge, the millions of dollars that have been spent and being able to monetize that on it. And that's where we put that puzzle together for you. And, and but it's, yeah. So we just encourage people sign on, learn, do what you want with the information, but then you're in the loop and we'll keep you as informed as you want. It's, it's, you is know, that four o'clock central time or Pacific? Pacific. That's, yeah. Pacific. Yeah. We're in West Hollywood. Okay, cool. Yeah, you, you can just email oh, us or... me too. Yeah, guys, guys, <laughs> guys, why don't you give out your business email if people are interested wanting to join and then you can email them the link because I'm looking at the link and it's really long. It's it's global.gotomeeting.com forward slash join what? forward slash yeah. 12-782-597. It's easier just to use my email. Yes. It's my name, Dane Conrad, D A Y N. Conrad, C-O-N-R-A-D, at gmail.com. That's easy email between the two of us and just email us and say, hey, I'd love to learn mm -hmm. and listen. If tomorrow doesn't work, give us some dates that do and we'd love to get to know you better. Then you do what you want with it. <laughs> hey, and, and listen, you know, there's never any pressure, guys. This is merely a class to, to get your footing. You know, we we were, aren't going to have you walk out with a bag of Amway soap, that's for sure. Or a box of dirt, <laughs> of course, on your face. <laughs> but, you know, Gayanne, I'll tell you, you know, we're very patient. Uh, land bankers are very patient. W when we're done with that webinar, we'll send you a list of links, and, and you can do your own Google yourself to death research and, and vet everything that we give you. But you know, seriously, what I like about the guys is that, you know, I went to their house. I mean, first of all, you know, it wasn't a pitch. I mean, we had gone out to dinner. We had gone out to lunch or dinner before. It was just getting to know each other. We had met at Catherine Gray's party. But, you know, on Facebook, people talk about each other. People see each other. And I think John approached me going, oh, my God, you're gay and Bruno. And I said, yes. And he's like, I'm John. I'm like, oh, my God, John. I mean, like, I've known him for years, you know. And, um, and that, and then, you know, and then we reached out. We got together. We had dinner. There was, I have to say, there was, no business talked about at the first dinner. It wasn't, it was just, let's get to know each other. I really didn't know what the hell they did too at that dinner. I had no idea. And then we, and then we were like, let's do this again. And then we went and went to his house and, you know, went to their house, not his house, their house and got the wine and cheese and, um, and had a wonderful presentation. Did not at any point feel pressured upon leaving there because they had a few properties that were in my price range to purchase. I didn't feel pressure. It was like, okay, thanks. And then we went out to dinner and Sue Burnside was there and we had a nice time at the restaurant. And again, no business was discussed. And then, you know, and then it was like, you know, they didn't really follow up. I mean, they followed up on things if it was going to be sold or something, but no pressure. So I, I really appreciated that. And I haven't purchased yet. And obviously we're still friends. So it's not like, you know, they're just these, sales guys that are love you. I'm just gonna meet, this, <laughs> I'm gonna meet these lesbians and these gay men and straight people and I'm gonna talk them into it if they don't buy for me fuck them no they're not they're not <laughs> you know I, I will tell you though that uh surprisingly the the lesbian community and the female community gets this a lot better than the gay community or men mm. or men so it's very interesting how much more investment savvy women are. Women are yeah. smarter. Like, what the yeah. fuck? I mean, seriously? Well, you know, there's there's They're a, more visionary as well. Yeah, exactly. We call, we call yeah. it Mother Earth. Shit don't happen without the gals. So, uh, you hey, know. Rick, Ricardo said it best. That's yeah. right. The woman is uh, smarter. That's right. The woman is <laughs> Sing us something. Sing us. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's it's even even once you buy a parcel, there's the risk is so low. This company is so rock solid. Um, you know, it's it's basically a one page contract to to purchase land. Sure. Um, and in that verbiage, it says within a year, if you go tour this dirt and you don't like it, this company will exchange it for like valued land. I mean, where do you get that? No one's ever done it. Because no. people get out there, they're like, nope, this is mine. I'm, I'm keeping it right. <laughs> you know, you guys, the land is not, you know, in WeHo. It's not in Beverly Hills. No. It's not. No. I mean, these guys and the company that they've worked for, they purvey it. They find areas outside of L.A. County that people 
that that people because everything's growing outside of LA County. So okay. and that line keeps moving and moving and moving and moving and moving, which is and people are getting smarter and they're purchasing this land, purchasing this land because towns will be made. Power grids need to be there. Things need to go there. So you are actually what they're guiding you is to buy property in an area that is not yet populated. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And what we did, talk, right? did I pay attention? You did, you yeah. did great. Oh my God. I'm, okay, we're going to start happy hour now. I mean, <laughs> you just go with it, Gay Ann. Yeah. And that's what we do. You need another, I'll help you. Do you need another salesperson? <laughs> <laughs> well, but, that's what we tell a lot of people is imagine thinking in advance. So, how I think about it is think in advance for the future of, you know, whatever city that's going to spurt out of there that they're going to need all this stuff built on this land. So you've got that key piece of property. And that's why it's not like a quick turnaround because you know everything has to sort of, you know, between the permits and the this and the dropping power and all that shit that has to be done. And we and don't do that. We don't, don't do any of that. that. You, know, mm -hmm. you are just buying the land, uh, pretty simple. You buy the land, you sit on it, things happen, and then boom, you know, it's gone. And then you make money. Yeah, and a simple analogy that we use all the time is 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 a great way because again, growing up in the Irvine area and believing as kids that you know if you grew up in this area, what was was Riverside ever going to be developed? Templeton, um, Irvine. But imagine if imagine your your favorite commercial corner that you sat on today or you sat on when you were a kid, and imagine if your family or grandparents had the wherewithal to have bought that five acres, which is a city block, when it was still vacant land. Right on yeah. front of the main yeah. road. All that was all that was in the planning when your grandparents or parents are we in our adult age now. Where is that going in the future? And if that happened with your grandparents or parents, how wealthy would your family be today? And that's what we're showing investors how to do today, where that future expansion is going to go. And, and where if, well, my father would have said to that. My father would have said, "Well, if your aunt had balls, she'd be your uncle." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I've said that a lot. <laughs> That's um, that I think her husband, I think her husband or her husband's family, maybe her husband only, had purchased tons of land in Burbank. Mm -hmm. And um, they're still their little name. They named the, the shopping center after the first three letters of their two children. And, you know, I don't think they own it anymore. I'm not sure. But you know what? They're not hurting right now. God bless them because mm -hmm. They bought this land when Burbank was nothing, I guess. I mean, I live in Burbank, so I mean, I don't know what the hell it was, you know, before 1985 is when I moved here. But, but the point is, you know, this is about investing for your future and investing for your future. You know, if you don't have the funds to sort of put away and, and do the stock market or do any sort of thing, this is something that's solid. It's something that will always pay off. You just need to be patient. You know, if you don't want to do this, then fuck it. Go play the lottery and good luck with that. You know, well, you. have a good time. <laughs> you know, if, if this is money you're going to need in three or five years, don't do it. You know, it's a diversification platform, ladies. So use it that way. Make sure this is money that you can wet, set, and forget. And we never put a sign in. So again, you got to have the balls like Uncle Auntie. Um, <laughs> And you've got to have staying power because right around seven years, people get the seven year itch and they say, oh God, what, you know, da, da, da. And, and we keep you educated all the way through your holding process. Now, I want to ask permission to maybe tie this into what just happened two days ago. Um, and that's the inauguration and a new regime. And, and what Biden is doing now and is he's putting over $2 trillion dollars into alternative energy expansion, mm -hmm. right? Now, I, I wanna tell all of you and thank all of you because guess what? All of you have been complicit in helping <laughs> myself, Dane, Sue Burnside, Valerie Milano, Thousands of Catherine, them. get wealthy. And the yes. way you're doing it, yes, so <laughs> thank you. The way you're doing it is because you are complicit in the laws that California has. I'm going net zero, no more oil, gas, or coal. It's looking like by 2035. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? That means solar. 
the wind too. Solar is the big game. And that's where we're making you guys rich is you're buying the dirt that's in that steamroller of the only spots left to put those solar panels. So yes, yes. And it's big money maker, big booty shaker. You know, I mean, if, <laughs> if you go to San Luis Obispo and to Berkeley, it's against the law to put gas in houses or buildings now, if it's a new structure. Mm. So the tipping point is over. The electrification of everything is happening. All your vehicles by 2025, have to start going electric or they'll miss the market. Mm. So I don't, do, do any of you- Electric car. Yeah. yeah girl. So, so, <laughs> so guess who the number one auto manufacturer in the world is as of January? Tesla. Tesla. Yes, yes. Tesla. And guess, guess who the number two is and they don't even have a vehicle on the road yet. I hope it's Porsche. Nicola. <laughs> oh, good dream. Good dream. Interesting. Interesting, because I've been I've been playing around with the stock market lately. I mean, just I started out with like pennies practically, and something caught my eye, and it's a uh, fuel cell uh, is the stock, and mm -hmm. I'm like amazed at how it's doing. I don't I know nothing about the stock market. I a friend of mine kind of gave me a couple little tips and said, you know, look at um, meatless. Um, you know, like Beyond Meat and some <clears throat> companies like that. There's a, a company called Neo, which makes a, a an, an electric car out of China. Uh, and uh, so, and then I found this fuel cell company and something I read just clicked. And it's like, it's going like this, but it made a huge jump and it continues to go up. So I'm called the S, it's called the S-curve. And what we're experiencing, what John was explaining is the same thing that happened when the early 1900s when the coal industry had to give away to fossil fuels or the horse and buggies had to give away to the auto industry. It's an S curve and it takes about 15 to 20 years for it to finally be introduced, becoming mainstream and taking off. What we are experiencing today is the exact same transition that happened between coal and the fossil fuel industry, but now the fossil fuel industry is giving way to what is the greatest shift of wealth in human history, energy. And that is right. everything in the world is being electrified, whether you're, you're paying attention to it or not. What we're gonna show you in the presentation is data that is out there, but no one's paying attention to it. And it's not billions. It is trillions being spent by the world's largest economies all the way down to third world countries. It is happening whether you like, like, like it or not or believe it. And we're getting in, in the way of the steamroller in the number one country or state in the union, the fifth largest economy in the world, California, that is developing this and has been for the past five years, over 4,000% more than the next state. And all of our investors are making killings simply because we own the stupid brown stuff that they have to put these on. Yes. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. And we help you, <laughs> ladies, we help you negotiate all the way to the finish line. Be Fun. Because literally our company, you, you've never heard of us. Our website is ugly as hell. <laughs> we, yeah, we don't spend 40 grand a year on a pretty website because you'd have to pay for that when you buy your dirt. So right. we don't do it. We are a relationship based company. And so when you buy, you're going to be our neighbor. So there goes the neighborhood, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> prettier though. But literally, you know, we've got over 28,000 global investors now with our company. And so every mile in these areas, we control about 50% of that dirt. Wow. And so when these scallywags come in to buy you, you know, if you buy something for 30,000, they're going to offer you a dollar and they're going to tell you, you got rattlesnakes, you got scorpions, you know, their That's job, true. their job is to steal it from you. We're going to be there to let you know what the comps are so that nobody steals from you ever again. Let and, me interrupt really quick. We have a call. Okay, no, great. Hi, this is Gay Ann and everyone from Between the Sheets. Welcome. What's your name, please? Hi, this is Valerie Milano. Hi. And um, it just <clears throat> it just looks like you guys are having way too much fun without me. But I learn something every time I hear these guys talk. We love you, baby. <laughs> I do. I learned something every time I hear him talk. So I'm just glad that you had him on your show tonight, Gayanne. Um, and uh, Robin Silverman's listening too. I know that. 
So oh, she's yum. also, uh, uh, yeah. So she said she had some wine and cheese at their house. And <laughs> yeah, she was an ex chiropractor as well, but she decided to leave her business. Um, so it looks like, uh, the way of the land here, we just got to keep going and, uh, find our money in the dirt. Yeah. Make yeah. our money in the dirt. Hey, yeah. listen, M Milano on one of her properties, she's got, I believe it's over a thousand acre solar field going in next door. And, and so uh -huh. what that Ooh. transfers to is, is over almost a billion dollars going in. So what would you guys do a wow. billion dollars going in next door to something you owned? Yeah, right? Yeah. Buy more. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's held that now. She hasn't sold it yet, but she's held that for three or four years now with some partners. You can partner up up to four. That's what, guys, that's what I was going to say. Um, you don't, I mean, you don't have to think you can buy it on your own. You guys, people can partner up. Yeah. And now, if people partner up, do you guys do the contracts that like, how, how does that, how would like, like, let's say Durga and I want to buy something. Um, she's going to, she and I are going to do 50-50. Uh, you guys just pretty much, you, we give you the money. And uh, <laughs> I wish you gave me the money. <laughs> uh, no, it, it goes to Chicago title. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is real estate. So there's a little bit of an escrow process that has to happen. <laughs> now, the property, now the property, the money, who, I mean, like, is that like you know when you go buy a house okay yeah. same, same house, price. and you can and it's you can negotiate you know you can negotiate so these when you go in there this is the price of that land there's no negotiation because what because what runs with that isn't just like you buy a house you're just buying it and trying to negotiate <laughs> to get it most affordable as possible you're getting very affordable land basically below market that's already been heavily researched you're not going to get that on the mls so it's already been mitigated or those risks. We've already put tons of effort into that. But after service, we as real estate agents, we start working for you after you invest. So we are updating you as much as you want, talking with you as much as you want, sending you update um, links. You can meet one of the owners does a update every Tuesday evening at, seven, at um, 6.30 Pacific time. We're gonna guide you to the finish line as advisories to make sure you get top dollar when you sell. So there's a lot of services for free that we're going to give you. And when you sell, it's 100% you. But you're going to be tenants in common with the other people on there, just like as if you partnered with someone in an apartment building or so, house. So I have a question. So let's say it's a $30,000 piece of property. Sure. Yeah. You guys get a percentage. How does how do you guys get paid? Because this is oh, so that's really simple. You know, all of us have walked into a, a model home situation, right? And when you walk in, there's the sales agent that takes you through all of the models. And if you buy one of those models, then the person who built that home or condo, they pay the sales agent. So you guys never pay us. It Belour pays us. Oh, when you I buy see. the dirt, when you buy the dirt, you're gonna buy it from Belour's inventory. And we have over 20,000 acres of inventory. So we can handle any appetite. You know, we've been here 40 years. And I think the most exciting thing, you know, cause you know, I, legal is such a big deal that we have no land related lawsuits on any of our strategies in 40 plus years ladies who the hell can say that in modern day america that, yeah. that was really one of the big three prong hooks for me right um that and and escorting you to the finish line yeah that's a full service now, like, okay, the we buy the land. So obviously with buying the land, there's going to be property. There's going to be taxes, right, on that land? Oh, yeah, that's the best part. The best part is California has Prop 13. So, you know, there's this thing Warren Buffett says. And he says, if you can control your holding costs, you can become very wealthy. And we, you know, Prop 13 was on the ballot again, and it got struck down again. And it's been here since the 70s. So, you know, uh, a good example is we have five acres in Palm Springs. The taxes, we've had that for 15 years. The taxes are $280 a year. <laughs> I don't know how much it's worth. Yeah, <laughs> yes. You know, Valerie Milano has a, a, an estate out there. She can tell you, I mean, tax, you know, that's a valuable piece of land. <laughs> So guess what? I don't care if it goes another five or 10 years, the value is going through the roof. I just want it before our son gets uh, yes. us. <laughs> yeah. We don't want the heirs to get that. <laughs> how far 
like how far outside of LA? Because I know you guys, you know, like probably a year ago, all that stuff that I was that you know I was being told was there is probably gone. So what yeah. areas now are you guys moving toward? Like where are you like out <laughs> about now? We're still in the in the same general areas that you saw, just, but again, like you said, those areas are have developed out greatly. And when you see the presentation, we are going to give you the exact number of acres that have disappeared, and the exact number of multiple multiple billions that have been spent and are on the ground in five years. And it will blow your mind. I'm not going to say it now because it's 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 incredible. But it's, give me a success story. Give me. Oh, you don't have to mention names. Yeah. Me okay. I'll, I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one, and it's a lesbian, right? Oh, yay! And, yay! <laughs> and I'll do one who's a Filipino. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and it, in my book, this is the oldest living lesbian on the books. Because, mm -hmm. um, ladies, this is my sister. And I'm going to tell you, for six years, she, she would not listen to this. She's a doctor. She's a very intelligent woman. Um, Valerie Milano, Sue Burnside, even uh, Deb and Catherine know her. Um, and she bought her first parcel when she was 68 years old. Now, she hasn't been the smartest of money managers. However, when she finally listened, she said, I should have told her about it sooner, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's, the first, she's the first of nine and I'm the eighth of nine. So of course, you know, right? You know the dynamics there. Well, she bought this parcel. 1.25 acres. She bought it for $37,000. And last March 19th, we all know what date that is, right? That is when we went into COVID lockdown. Mm. On that day, she got a lease contract on her property. And because we are going 100% alternative energy by 2045, we have to have batteries. Because when the sun goes down, solar panels don't work. So they are consolidating about 50 1.25 acre parcels. They're doing a whole field of batteries up in Lancaster. And are you ready? She's going to get $18,000 a year. Wow. Plus a 2% annual cost of living inflation index. That's ridiculous. And it's a 25 year lease. And are you ready? That's six hundred and six thousand oh. dollars at the end of twenty-five years, which means now here's the here's the icing on the cake. Now I love my sister, <laughs> but I cannot live with my sister. <laughs> As I told you, she hasn't been the most smart on money, and she's given permission for me to talk about this. <laughs> she's on Social Security, guys, and her Social Security is nineteen hundred bucks a month. Um, now that don't pay for my shoes. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> so um, this is going to get her two thousand dollars more a month into her household. Nice. You want to know what our passion is? That's our passion, right? And 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 ladies, who owns this after twenty five years? You. Well, not me. She does. <laughs> <laughs> she still will. She still will. And and what do you think the value will be based on what you know about LA? I mean, it's ridiculous. But also and, to add yeah. to what I was going to say is like, and, and I'll do I'll give another quick example, is that because most people like to compare it to what they can do, what's happening with the stock market, what annual return on investment that's going to be for her with this one lease is 60% annualized return per year. per year. So if you can do 60% guaranteed on that, that on any other investment, then <coughs> please share it with us. But this is not abnormal for us. This is a normal we have another investor who bought a parcel a 10 acre parcel for twenty thousand in 2013. Is this the filipino yes, yes. okay yeah <laughs> yeah this is the Filipino. good someone's paying attention thank you <laughs> but she owns a lot of land already so she knew the data was there and she knew where california was planning this to happen the first solar facility did not build and if you saw where this is even if you see where it is today you'd be like there's nothing out there but if you, knowing what we know, it's already all accounted for. Two years after she bought, Warren Buffett built the world's largest solar facility at that point, 8.9 square miles in size, was okay. built in 2015. She bought two years before that even built. Today, wow. there's thousands upon thousands of other facilities out there. She just got bought out six years later after 
remember she bought for 20,000 for 160,000. Wow. That's an 800% return on investment. That is not abnormal. And it's what the game is, is like, if you buy it early enough, you buy it at 50 cents a square foot and you sell it at $5 a square foot, for example, that's why our equity and our returns are so big because we buy it when everyone else thinks we're crazy. That's right. But the knowledge and the data is there years before it happens. We just simply get there early. And we, that's why we make such a great return because we get buy it so affordably. So we, we do have a whole bucket of those. Hold on. Um, Hold on, hold on. Everyone, if you want to call 323-524-2599, 323-524-2599. You're watching Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network, first and third Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Pacific with our guests, Dane Conrad and John Ellers, um, land investment and politics and so much more. <laughs> so much more. <laughs> so I uh, want some other dirt. I want some other dirt. Besides so, ours. I have a question. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. What if you only have like five thousand dollars? What then you what partner? Happens? Then you partner with someone, or you, okay. you know, if you have five thousand cash and you got ten thousand sitting in an old dead IRA, you can partner with yourself. I I'm a musician. I don't have a fucking IRA. Come on now. Yeah. No. Hey, <laughs> you know what? Love. I didn't either. It, you know, it wasn't until I'm, I was in my mid forties that I started the retirement programs. So, because we've always been independent business people. So, you know, we came out of the trenches with you, love. We know exactly what that is. That's why we're so passionate okay. about it. Yeah. Too. I have a question. So we people buy the land. Okay. Buy the land. So, do you, you make obviously the biggest yield if someone wants to come and develop on that land, you keep that land and they lease it from you, which is where you get all this thing, something like that. Yeah, if, if someone came, but will do some people just come in and just want to buy the land period oh, yeah. from you? Yes, oh, yeah. it's either That's, lease or sale. Yeah, leases we're seeing more with the renewable energy. And this is a whole new thing because it's a new industry. Leasing not so much on community encroachment, when you're dealing with residential, industrial, commercial, business park, mixed use. But those can also be very stratospheric because the returns on what those can do when you get upzoned, most people just don't understand that whole process of what happens when you go when you get upzoned from agricultural to a higher zoning or from residential to commercial. That can be hundreds of percent of value increase, all based on Urban Land Institute, not from what we say because there's only certain areas that the city or counties have designated and planned out where they can build. So they can't just put anything anywhere. So when you know the designations of where those things are going to the city plans, the map for key infrastructure is going, you, we can place you in strategic areas that is exactly we're just waiting for that hammer to hit. And that's where also can be, we've seen investors make some significant returns on those kind of investments as well. Yeah, let's buy this, small parcels. You, you don't buy small parcels. For instance, I mean, Cheryl lives in Palmdale, right? I do. Oh, my. Maybe a yeah. spy for you and find you some little spots. We own in Palmdale already. So, yes, we're yeah. neighbors, Cheryl. Sure. Um, but literally, you drive out to Avenue L, as in love, mm -hmm. and 100th, and you park there. And okay. you just look and see that we're not kidding. Uh, when you look out at that valley, you guys ready? Remember I said you were complicit? There's 60 billion, six zero billion dollars in solar on the ground in the past five years. Wow. And it's all from private money. It's the best damn kept secret. Mm -hmm. But listen, we don't just, you know, get a dartboard and pick dirt. I want you to know, Valor oh, has. Not? You know what? You wouldn't have to if you were best friends with Cheryl. She's a medium. She can tell you where the fuck to pick without. <laughs> okay, Cheryl, I'm it's calling you next. We're there. We're there. But you know, she's our divining rod. Yeah, my, <laughs> my, my point is, we Valor has 15 experts, and they've been doing this 40 years. And we go through all the landmines, and we get rid of them, so that we give you the premier geographical locations. Not actual landmines, though, right? Yeah, no landmines. <laughs> well, I don't know. Land you know, the developer deals with that. We don't ever have to worry about that. <laughs> My biggest fear are rattlesnakes. So, you know. <laughs> My favorite part is when they were showing me the land on, on like, on, on maps and stuff. And they're like, we'll take you out. And I'm like, I don't camp. Yeah. <laughs> She's not even Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Italian is close, baby. 
Um, I'm <laughs> healthy. I can make any great, and I cook really well. But no, I'm saying I don't camp. I'm like, oh my god, there's dirt. I mean, do I really have to go out there? And it's like, no, you don't have to go out there. Good. No, you don't. You don't. Oh my god, that is so mean. I, I I always say I was raised by a cancer mom, and my mom's like, I'm sorry, get dirty. What? It's like, <laughs> if there's a hotel nearby, I'll go camping. Yeah, because exactly. I'm like, I'm five stars. Go to my bed, shower, <laughs> have a great meal. I mean, and I, I it's, yeah. this, this is going to sound so elitist, so maybe I should invest. But the point is. A Motel Six or a Super Eight, you know, that's that's camping to me. I mean, seriously, that, that's roughing it. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Let's go camping. I, 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 I will not stay in a motel <laughs> ever again. I would rather go camping. I have all the gear. I have a really yeah. tent. I have a queen size blow up mattress. I know how to do it right. I went and stayed at I did this thing, the Ignite Festival, out in Joshua Tree, where mm -hmm. I learned how to juggle fire and stuff like that. I went by myself for three days. I got a wild hair up my rear end and I went out there and I had a great time and I slept like a baby because my tent I is- I buy an RV. That's what I want to do. I'll, I'll, I'll do an RV, but someone would have to pay me money to go in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> there are people. Yeah, I've done tents. Oh, yeah, I ha I've never. They're yeah, great. I have it's done seven, it and I actually have shit in the woods. So. <laughs> <laughs> Never. It's just one time, and that is it. The, you know, I don't, I don't do dirt. I don't yeah, do. Dirt. I I mean, in that respect, buying dirt and becoming, you know, financially um, rich—that's a whole different thing. As long as I don't have to mm. live on that dirt in a freaking like you know trailer park, I'm good. I once had very, very memorable sex in a Motel Six. <laughs> nice. Tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> Aware that you have stepped foot <laughs> on here in Nice, in London, everywhere. I'm sure, I'm sure. I, I, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. All right, so guys. Speaking of sex, where's the where's the coolest where's the most coolest place that you guys had sex in and with? Well, with each other, I hope. Oh, yeah. Don't say it. <laughs> oh, we're, <laughs> we're we're closed. Weird, strange place that you guys had sex. Yeah. Wow, we've been our lots of places. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all right, I'll tell you this. I know. I, we, we, I feel so boring all of a sudden. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're not small girls, so I'll just give you this little tidbit. Is when we, oh. yeah, there we, was that car in, instance, and we're like, never, never, no, never. we can't do cars. <laughs> no, because six two and six three, and oh, both of us are over two hundred pounds. We're pretty, you know, muscular guys. And uh, no one's found the stick shift yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Years later, still can't drive that car again. <laughs> we, we have broken two beds. There, I'll get that's the only tidbit I'll give you. So two I've never months. broken a bed yet. You know, you're <laughs> look at how teeny you are. I have straps, but I haven't broken a bed. <laughs> oh, girl, I, I've got the best, the best story. When okay, I was okay. with my late husband, we lived in Big Sur up on this amazing 500 acre ranch up in the mountains. And it was like three and a half miles up from Highway 1, up a dirt road to get to our house. And uh, the Basin Complex fire came through in 2008. And um, it burned uh, like 163,000 acres, I want to say. Yes. Uh, and they lit a backfire right across our ranch, which was like, <laughs> thanks, guys. Anyway, our house survived. Um, we came back after being evacuated and um, the whole water system, my husband was a contractor. So he had put in that water system from Dolan Spring with pipes and all that to go to the houses on the ranch. And of course, because the pipes were PVC, they had all burned up in the fire. So he had to go up with the crew and rebuild all the, the pipes. So one weekend when the crew wasn't there, he asked me if I wanted to hike up to Dolan Spring. And I said, sure. And it was a beautiful sunny day and the creek is all bubbling and you could like imagine fairies and, you know, beautiful blue dragonfly. And we came upon this big powdery patch of ash from where the fire had gone through. And he looked at me and he said, should we have a little quest for fire moment? And I was like, yeah, okay. And, you know, putting ashes on ourselves and taking off my clothes. And we had this primal sex in the ashes. And it was great. And so then we're laying after basking in the afterglow. And um, 
I guess, how shall I say, I'm irresistible to all sorts of creatures because these little gnats were kind of gathering around the leftover moistness on him. <laughs> kind of like waving him like away a little bit and we're talking. <laughs> and then he like goes to slap one away and he goes, ow! Because at that point it wasn't little gnats. A yellow jacket had landed on the bell of his penis and stung no. him. Oh. And, oh. Like, and so then oh. I, ah! Ah! And he starts freaking out and jumping up and down. And I'm like trying not to laugh. And then he just runs and like spread eagles, puts his junk in the in the creek. And I, I <laughs> and even he, he was like, don't laugh at me. But then he started laughing too. Hey, anyway. us gay men want to know if you kissed it and made it better. <laughs> no, not at that point. It was like bright red and swollen to three oh. times normal size because it was a yellow jacket. Well, that's one oh, way to get a bigger penis. Kid. <laughs> Do not try this at home. Penis pump when you have a yellow jacket. That's all I have to say. <laughs> not the method of choice for penis expansion. No. No. Not recommended. I've never been more glad I don't have a penis until this moment right now. <laughs> <laughs> it felt so bad. It felt so bad. It was horrible. <laughs> but it was hilarious. Oh, and the, the capper to this is Radon Chong is a friend of mine. So I wrote the whole story down and I sent it to her. And she thought it was hysterical. Oh. <laughs> Speaking oh of God. Quest for Fire, because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> <Quest for Fire. laughs> nice. Glad that all our parts are inside. That's all. <laughs> That's it. Everything is inside. Yes. Everyone yes. joined the Mile High Club. You did, Kara. Did I you didn't. Yeah. Did you train, but no, not. Never. Well, Durga's done that. Yeah, we figured. Again, I got that? a great story. Hold on. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be bad. I'm psychic. I'm psychic. I think Cheryl has never been. <laughs> never. Wait, you got to go in there. there. You are psychic, Gaya. <laughs> <laughs> and Roxanne, Tristan, you not so much either yet. Yet. I don't know. I think I've done pretty much almost everything, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what Mile High Club is? I don't recall right now. I'm sorry. An airplane. What? on the airplane. In yes. The oh. Yes. Not all the wait. way. So In wait. The what? Not all the way. Hmm. <laughs> I was on Japan Airlines on tour with Pink Floyd, and I was having a thing with one of the guys in the in the uh, backline crew. And it was an overnight flight. We were flying from Australia to Japan, and we waited till everybody went to sleep after dinner. And we're like, "Let's go do it." So we go in the one of the bathrooms in the middle of the cabin, and this is Japan Airlines. And I don't know for some reason the bathroom seemed like really tiny. And so he's behind me and I had my foot up on the edge of the sink and it was really starting to get really good, right? But my knee hit the call button. <laughs> so all of a sudden we hear this, hello, hello, you okay, you come for help? And he's like, go away, hello, hello, fuck off, hello, hello. It's like the lady was like banging on the door for like 10 minutes and finally she left and we had to like slink out separately and it was kind of awkward. Your but. life is a situation comedy. Yeah, well, <laughs> right Durga, I need to get your number and we need to exchange stories. <laughs> I got a billion of them, trust me. Oh, I swear to God. I mean, I think right after Cheryl, I think I'm the next nun on this call because I swear <laughs> to God. I, I'm, <laughs> true. I'm like, I mean, Cheryl's like perfect. Like she's like the perfect no. person. You know what I mean? No, no. Aww. That means she's the dirtiest. Not so at all. Yeah, the quiet type, right? You got, the it's the quiet type. ones you got to watch, oh, yeah. watch out for. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's always the quiet ones you got to watch out for. I lost my virginity to someone just like Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. As a fact, it was Cheryl. No. <laughs> <laughs> Cheryl? Oh, my is God, that is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I've turned out a few gay men myself, so I'm just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to do it. Yes, yeah. got to do it. It's gay not... men, straight women, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm gonna tell you a story today. I, you know what? I'm, I'm on the dating sites, right? It's like whatever, and they're whatever. I'm not gonna say anything. But so this, 
was kind of was attractive more than the majority of the ones that I've seen. And she, we had a match and she's like, oh, I'd lo love your smile. I'd love to talk to you. This happened today. Right. And I said, sure, here's my number. What do I give a shit? It's a cell phone number. Right. And so she goes, do you have time to talk? I'm like, sure, but I've got a show tonight. So, you know, you can only uh, just call me before between this time. So she calls me and she's like, hi, how are you? My name is blah, blah. I said, hi. And then we started talking <laughs> and she, she was saying that she just came out late in life. You know, I think she's 60 something. I don't know for real, maybe not that much, but, um, but she said, <clears throat> and she said, you know, um, she goes, but what I found out in the gay community lesbians is it's there's a very high drama i said oh yeah well, you're welcome. <laughs> welcome i said you're lucky you came out at 50 something because you missed 30 you, i'm 50 so you might you know you live 30 years of drama and joy and excitement um and i said she goes yeah but i just got out she goes you know i, I you know as i said you know we were talking about relationships and not going back and i'm thinking maybe she was with a woman and she goes like she goes no she she actually like was a little bit of a lesbian, then that didn't work out. That went back to her ex-boyfriend <clears throat> and now she thinks she's gay again. And I'm thinking to myself, and she goes, yeah, a lot of lesbians don't, don't really understand that. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't understand the whole bisexual thing, sorry. I said, because first of all, like disease, <laughs> um, number one. Number two, <laughs> sorry, um, number two, I said, it's bad enough that you're competing with women, you know what I mean? Now I've got to possibly have someone who's interested in me that like at the turn of a, you know, a, a, a whatever, a coin, you'll be like interested in guys. I said, nah, I'm too old for that shit. I said, I want someone, <laughs> I, said, I might put it nicer, but I was like, no, I said, I'm not going to settle anymore. And I'm just going to, if I have to be single and wait for the right person, I will. And then she asked me if I was an actress. I said, no, I have this talk show thing, but if you'd call that an actor, no. Then we talked about all the thing. And then I said, so why don't you tell me about you? And she said, um, no, she said, she said, um, oh, something like she had to go. And I'm like, no, it's fine. I've got another like half an hour, 40 minutes to talk. She goes, <laughs> so funny. She's like, no. I said, well, let me hear about you. She said, no, I don't think this is going to be a good match. And I'm like, oh, really? Um, I'm like, okay, well, bye-bye. Um, nice talking to you. It's like <laughs> your journey. You find, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? First of all, that was a red flag, number one. Okay. Number two, if you're kind of like beginning to talk to someone and enjoying a conversation, why does it have to be like only girlfriend? Like maybe we could have like talked and we had stuff in common. Why yeah. not expand your friend pool? You know, and I'm thinking, you know, my friend's like, Gan, when I call my friend, she's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not you. I'm like, who the hell? I never fucking thought it was about me. I just thought, oh my God, that's another fucking train wreck that I, that I, that I missed. And what's really important is I have been, I have been, I've seen the red flags. I've never dodged a train wreck ever. I've went on the cuckoo train and then I'm like, fuck. Now I jump on. <laughs> I jumped on. I said, now I found it. Now I can figure out when the train is going off the track and I'm going, adios. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I, I've, I've came across plenty of them, uh, especially recently where it's their first time out late in life. And I'm like, oh no, this probably isn't gonna end good. But you know what? She did you a favor because she hightailed it out of there. And mm -hmm. uh, really what that comes down to is she felt confronted with something. She couldn't handle it. So she got out which is great for you because it's oh, like, no. oh. I'm happy. Oh no, I'm, ha I'm happy about it. I just thought this was, it was funny. Um, but you know, but Dane and John, they say they have a lot of lesbian friends. Can you kind of line them up for me for Christ's fucking sake? <laughs> yeah. A lot of them are listening <laughs> tonight. Yeah, what it sounds like. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> Never a good example of when you. Partners. What? Well, Get Gan three gorgeous partners in a plot of land, and maybe they can all have sex on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I've never done that either, <laughs> FYI. I'm down for a party like that. <laughs> I knew you would be. Um, <laughs> a bed of ashes, a jar of honey. And yeah, there there you go. <laughs> no yellow jackets, though. No yellow jackets. None. None whatsoever. We'll have to sage the land, though. Um, that's where Cheryl comes in with blindfold. There we are. Yes. <laughs> Bless the land. And 
and in there somewhere. Guided meditation, and we'd be good to go, and then she'll go back to Palmdale. Um, <laughs> so, hey guys, I just want to say we're winding up. It's eight twenty-one. I told you an hour and a half well, goes by really, really fast. Um, yet again, Dane and John, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'd you. love to have thank you again at some point. Will you give people again the information regarding tomorrow? Yes. Um, my email again is Dane, D A Y N, Conrad, C O N R A D, at gmail.com. The presentation's at 4 p.m. Pacific time and it's on GoToMeeting. So email us saying requesting it. We'll send you the link and just join on. Let us and know. It's you'll free, be on and right? It's free. Oh, totally, totally free. Yeah, it's great. That sounds really interesting. And I think you both adorable. Oh, thank oh, you. Yeah. Uh, that's a great time with all of you. And yes. Cheryl, I'm, I'm going to get you to talk someday. Oh, I will be there tomorrow. Are you kidding? I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. No, you guys are wonderful. Thank you. It's so much fun. Oh, and you. when COVID's over, or you're kind of in my bubble, could we have cocktails soon? Just oh my God, nah. yes. We can't wait. We're dying here. We got a rooftop. We can sell some wine and cheese. Wine and cheese. I okay. need uh, hey, love. No sale. I'm always. Always. <laughs> always. Where in West Hollywood are you? Where's Santa Monica and Vista? It's over by La, uh, La Brea. I I'm, I'm at Laurel and Selma, so I'm, I could walk oh, to your house. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh, you could. everyone. Let's not give out the addresses online. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good good point. Point. I'm <laughs> You know, even though it sounds like we're just hanging out, we do have people listening. Um, <laughs> so we actually do. Um, but I just want to say thank you, guys. Um, and I just want to say to the community out there, LGBT plus, LMNOP, heterosexuals, bisexual, I don't care. We're people. Forget about the labels. We're people. And I want to say in gratitude for listening to the show and supporting us between the sheets podcast first and third Friday of every month at 7 PM Pacific, follow the show on Facebook, YouTube channel. We'll have all the old shows and this show up probably tomorrow or as Cara knows, maybe Sunday. Um, <laughs> uh, please tell your friends and share. Um, and I wish Cher was going to be on the show. That would be sort of fun, but not quite yet. Um, but anyway, you know, this is, um, this is a new era. This is hope. This is, you know, have faith, hope. It's growing, it's expanding. And, you know, what happens is when you're always at the bottom, I mean, we were bottom, um, yeah. you can only go up. Right. So let's all join together, you know, love, not hate. I know that sounds really cliche, but it's time to sort of band together as one, you know, put your differences aside. Let's make let's really make America great again. Yeah. Uh, seriously. And, um, and um, kumbaya, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Seriously. Um, one of my favorite quotes I was want to say is, and it's from um, when we had our bath and body line and it really, our differences is where we find our greatness. So the fact that we're all unique in our own special way, embracing that amongst each other and accepting that each other and that realizing that we are all one part of a, a greater unified universe or world whatever you want to look at that's really what makes our our lives and other people's lives so much more beautiful and i really just want to thank you all again and thank you gayan for letting us be part of that much deeper circle of color that we just added to our lives today so thank you thank you so everyone thank you so much um Again, QTE Brad on Instagram, Cara Noble. Yes, hi. Oh, this week I'm a mosaic artist. I'm claiming it. <laughs> Having done mosaic, people say you're so artistic, you're an artist. I go, no, no, no. But I decided to claim it and I got my first commission. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, know, isn't that yeah, fantastic. Very nice. What is it? I have to know, what do you, what do you commission to do? It's a bird bath, in fact. A bird bath? Bird bath. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bird bath, baby. Bird bath. <laughs> I've just started thinking about it, so I'm very excited. Well, it sounds more expensive as a bird ball. <laughs> I know. It will be, sweetheart. Got <laughs> a boy, girl. <laughs> Cheryl Murphy. Guys, uh, thank you. Thank you both, Dane and John, just for helping make all of us wealthy. I mean, really, this is so wonderful that you're sharing your knowledge. Uh, and Gayan, I'm going to be doing some demonstrations. You guys can see my upcoming events on my website, mediumcheryl.com. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, love that.
Roxanne Rosen. Hi, everyone. Just thank you. I um, love the talks about sex. I'm now wide awake, even though I work. <laughs> Dane and John, I'm coming to your rooftop. We're, we're going to have a Bring it, baby. So, <laughs> if you want to find me, you can find me at Roxanne Rosen, and you all have a good night. And Durga McBroom. Uh, I'm Durga McBroom. You can find me on Facebook, on my personal and my uh, fan page. Uh, I'm on Twitter as uh, at Mrs. Durga McBroom. Uh, my Instagram is Durga Diva. And please look for my album, Black Floyd, that I did with my sister. Uh, it's been released by us, the McBroom sisters, Black Floyd. It's on Amazon, iTunes, uh, Bandcamp. And look for it because you can. <laughs> Hey, Durga, next time you're on, um, send me an MP3 or something. We can play it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, right. we'll do it. Send me an MP3. Again, guys, thank you so much. Um, I, I just thank you so much. Um, I'm so happy that I didn't have a guest and I was going through and I saw your posting. I'm like, let me see if the guys want to do it. And I think truly, I think you're like the third like we've only had like one other guy on the show as a guest. I think you're the last name. Yeah, it was Jonathan. And so, you know, I'm diversifying myself. Because <laughs> 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 so, this is not a fucking lesbian show. Just want to know. Yeah. Uh, but, but thank you. I don't know who the hell the guest will be next in two weeks. Um, but it should, hopefully it'll be somebody fun and exciting. And, um, and like I said, we uh, just, you know, go out there. Be the best you can be. Love your neighbor. Spread kindness, compassion. Um, have empathy. And um, let's all just be together. Hey, it's, it's you know, it's Biden-Harris. It's, it's, it's a new world. So, <laughs> yes. yes. I hope that, you know, I, look, I, I can't wait to, uh, that that guy goes into prison or some shit. That, that, that's going to be like, buy the popcorn and um, wear the masks and uh, show it on the side of a building. You know what I mean? Like, like let's like all sit there in unity and go, yay, motherfucker. So <laughs> <clears throat> have a great night. Have a great weekend. We'll see you in two weeks here. Um, and, and with that, I want to thank each and every one of you out there and who join me every other week. Um, be safe, be well, and as always, namaste. Thank Thanks. you so much. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye.